Tonight starts with the all-new special Game View. Hey guys, Scott here. It's time for a special episode of Game View. We're discussing Nintendo at E3. We're gonna get straight into it. My special guests, as usual, Sarah and Roxy. Yo. Hello. And we're gonna get started because I know you guys have a lot to say on this. First topic of the night, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Nintendo, take my money. Man, I was... I didn't get to see anything when it first came out, so I kind of had to wait. And I was going to get some lunch with my dad and my sister, and I got on my phone, and I started watching the trailer. And from the get-go, I had goosebumps. And by the end of the trailer, I almost started to cry because it was so beautiful. Yeah... That kind of happened to me, too. I was just like, this. I, like, melted in my chair. It was... Ah. I need. So bad. (laughs) Actually, I think I sent out out a tweet as well about it. I, I, like, uh, linked the trailer, tweeted out at Nintendo of Canada, and said, hashtag need, hashtag melt. (laughs) (laughs) Alright, so I guess we should begin with the name. What do you think about it? I'm it's... I'm Go I'm ahead. a big fan of it. I like it. It's not what I was expecting, but yeah. it's from what I would have seen from the gameplay that they've been showing and the trailer, it seems very fitting. Yeah. Uh at first I was kind of very skeptical and I'm like Breath of Wild, like what the hell? That's that doesn't sound like a Zelda t- name. What kind of because we're so used to the naming convention being something to do with an item in game, so I, that's why I was all confused. Like that, I have no idea what kind of item that might be. Uh, and then they explained it in the press conference. I'm like, oh, okay. And then as I watched more and more of the gameplay and the the footage from the game, I'm just like, okay, yeah, I'm good with the name now. <laughs> I like it. It it feels very fitting for uh, this title. It, it actually reminds me of Call of the Wild, or like you said, Roxy, a Breath of the Wind. Yeah, I, for some reason, I'm constantly wanting to say Breath of the Wind instead of the Wild. Not I'm not the only me. one that does that? No, not yes. at all. <laughs> I'm not the only one. And a like, friend of mine oh. kind of said this, and I don't, I didn't really dismiss it so much as I just kind of questioned it he said the name sounded like a spin-off title and i don't really know what oh. to make of that because from what the game looks like it's definitely not a spin-off oh hell no and, and the they, title, they even confirmed its main series and the they... title doesn't really seem spin-offy enough like yeah. you know triforce heroes or something so I was, I was really confused and i don't know if that's a consensus of most people either well, they did say in the press conference that it is uh, it is canonical to the timelines. It's uh, I believe they said it's uh, several centuries after Twilight Princess. When did they say that? Because uh, I don't remember them saying that at all. There was a breakdown that I was watching where it mentioned I was uh, I remember hearing it and then it was I heard it and then it was in a breakdown that I was watching of the footage. Uh, let me pull it up here. I'll say this. I mean, it's definitely a unique name. It, uh, like when you compare it to the other names, like Majora's Mask or Ocarina of Time or uh, Wind Waker or Twilight Princess or Skyward Sword, it, it I mean, all of those names sort of give you the impression the game has to revolve around that particular title which is in reference to an item or something like you said sarah this one seems to be 
in reference to more of like uh, an open wild world. They mentioned the uh, the time period during in the breakdown uh, for the trailer uh, over on the Nerdist. They they um, they ended up picking up on it and they are uh, citing it on their breakdown of the trailer and all the footage there. That's really interesting because it, c from what I've seen, it could take place after Twilight Princess, but at the same time, it wouldn't make any sense because the Koroks are in the game and they only appeared in Wind Waker and that's in the adult era timeline, which is not where Twilight Princess takes place at. What were the enemies and the... We had bulk goblins in Tw Twilight Princess, didn't we? Like the Boca things that were riding been, the boars? Bulk goblins have been in Twilight Princess. They were in Skyward Sword. They were in Wind Waker. Yeah. They were in a bunch of different games. A lot of the enemies that they were fighting in the gameplay were uh, bulk, gobl bulk goblins. Yeah. But they were in but, a bunch um, of different Zelda games. They're not Twilight yeah. Princess specific. Whereas but, Koroks are. They're here, Wind Waker specific. So if, uh, let's assume that uh, that they didn't say that and that nerd the nerdist uh, was wrong on that citation. Uh, I still think it probably could fall in after the in the Twilight Princess uh, timeline because the architecture looks reminis very reminiscent of the architecture found in Twilight Princess and the scene in which where you see Link look off to the castle in, in the distance that's getting engulfed by that dark entity of some sort. That castle looks a striking resemblance to the castle in Twilight Princess, and the bridge itself looks very, 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 very close to the bridge of Elden. Well, that said, where in the adult timeline would have would Hyrule have been destroyed? Because it says, that's, that, yeah, it I says know. that they take place in a destroyed Hyrule. I the know. That's what I've been trying to figure out. The only is in the child, or not the child, the adult era and the hero is defeated era because yeah. in Zelda 1 and 2 that's known as Hyrule's decline I know but that's what I've been trying to figure out I went I immediately went to the Hi my Hyrule Historia and tried to figure out uh, if what happened because the game that immediately sequels Twilight Princess in the timeline is Four Sword Adventure and and in According that to game, the Hyrule Historia. And in, they, and in that, that game, Ganondorf and Vadi were both stopped. And Ganondorf yeah. was stopped, like, mid-game. I know, and so I went immediately, and, and that's why I'm, the Hyrule Historia didn't really give me any answers to that as to what could have happened in between the two timelines. But, like, when Hyrule was destroyed in the child timeline, it was ultimately, it was destroyed by a flood. So then we have that's to... That's the adult timeline. Yeah. Because that's, that's Wind Waker. I, yeah, it Child was destroyed by a flood. is Majora's Mask and Twilight Princess. Yeah. No, I know, but that's what I'm saying. In Wind Waker, it was destroyed by a flood. So if if this game took place in the Wind Waker timeline, we have to then ask ourselves, well, what happened to the giant ocean that covered the land? Spirit Tracks, land is already starting to come back after the world was flooded and they had already found a new continent. Oh, okay. That's yeah, I didn't play Spirit Tracks. <laughs> I'm just like, nope. because of Spirit Tracks that I think this could take place in the adult era timeline, as well as yeah. it specifically saying Hyrule was destroyed, and we saw that for ourselves in Wind Waker. Yeah. Plus, well, when Link was running up from after his sleep, it kind of gave me that look of how Hyrule looked in Wind Waker and it kind of looked like that yeah well there's there's a lot of chic like Sheikah stuff around too like a lot more than in a previous uh, any any other game as well and in like, Twilight you know, Princess the Sheikah if I... monks yeah like the monks with like the Sheikah eyes and the Sheikah slate and all that and if I remember correctly, in Twilight Princess, the Sheikah were on the verge of dying out. I think? I don't remember there being any kind of reference to the Sheikah in Twilight the, Princess. Uh, 
the the town of Shad the Shadow Town or what oh was it yeah called? that's right yeah like uh, the old woman who was the last of the Sheikah yeah so something drastic has happened either way it's either in the other reason too why I think it might be twi might be the Twilight Princess timeline is because of the shape of the Master Sword because I've noticed that each timeline sort of has its own version of the Master Sword, if you will, that can be mostly done down to art style, but there is a difference between the Master Sword in each timeline, and yeah, the Master Sword, in... and the Master Sword in this iteration looks a lot like the Master Sword from in the tw that's found in Twilight Princess era. Yeah, that's true. And the ma well, the Master Sword is also rusty and broken. Yeah. Which brings up a lot of questions. How did it get this rusty? How did it get those chits? What happened? And the only thing I can I, I can think of is when Link stabbed Ganondorf in Wind Waker, when he thrusted the Master Sword into the gem on Ganon's forehead. Ooh, 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 okay, wait. Back to the trailer. There is a there is a segment where they show the t show the master sword in its pedestal. The master sword in the Wind Waker was left in Ganon's head. When did they show that? Oh yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. I remember. Was, yeah. And that did look like the Sacred Grove from Twilight Princess. Yeah. So I'm pretty certain it's Twilight Princess era. I'm, so now the and I'm we do know that the. I'm still I know. not 100% convinced because yeah. it would have to take place something way drastic happened after Four Swords Adventure. Yeah, something drastic, and they said too in the press conference that you're not going to be given much of a backstory in the game. Everything well, they said about the, they said the everything is like a mystery. They said the backstory you get is something you're going to have to find out on your own. They weren't yeah. going to tell us specifically, and we would have yeah. to learn through playing the game. Yeah, we'd have to search for the back backstory and learn it and fish it for ourselves. It's like a giant... It's, it's essentially... It looks like they're, they want to play it as like a mystery for players to discover. And that, that, I think, might be the biggest main goal is to... Or one of the main goals in the game itself is to figure out what happened to Hyrule. And why is Lincoln like this weird stasis pod thing? <laughs> I want to know about that too. It's like, what? They. Something tells me. It... Okay, this is my theory. Um, because we know that they have. Oh, they have technology inter being introduced in this game. Or like, so they're. Or the Hyrule equivalent to technology. We've seen that in the Sheikah Slate. And we see that in how the uh, trials are laid out. Like, they're sort of technologically looking trials and what I think may have happened is that the, the their technology may have backfired on them and that's why the sentinels are all like or the guardians or whatever are the enemies they may have been built by Hyrule to protect Hyrule but then they sort of had a Skynet type uprising and then just went BOOM that's a very, very loose and very, very conjectured theory, mind you, but I don't know. There, it's, a, it's an idea of what could have happened. I still want to know what is up with the Koroks and why they're in this game. Because the Koroks, the Koroks were only ever in Wind Waker, like I said, and they were originally the Kokiri, and when the Flood happened, Oh they yeah. Had to evolve to become the Koroks. That's true, eh? And so it being in the adult era timeline makes a lot of sense. But then why would they have Yeah. But then why would Unless the Master something... Sword be in its pedestal? Unless and it could also it could be the case that whatever cataclysm caused the caused the child timeline to go Kaploosh uh, may have forced the Kokiri to become Koroks as well. Because we have to assume that the Koroks were from the Kokiri. Because... Uh, 
Well, I mean, the great Deku tree says in Wind Waker, once upon a time, long ago, the Koroks took on human forms, but when yeah. they came to live on the sea, they took these shapes. So oh, the, the children the Korok, of yeah. the Kokiri Forest turned into the Koroks after the flood. Yeah. If it weren't for that flood, then the Koroks wouldn't have turned, or the Kokiri wouldn't have turned into the Koroks, which is why they're not present in we also don't see Wind the Kokiri in. We don't see the Kokiri in Twilight Princess either, though. Either though, and well, if you look at the landscaping, it kind of looks like that Hyrule sort of occupied the Kokiri forest and sort of made it their own as uh, Elden. We also province. don't see any presence of the Great Deku Tree that was planted right after the uh, old, or right after you freed Saria in Ocarina. Yeah. Oh, so many questions. I'm sure all the answers will be revealed as more gameplay <laughs> is leaked over the next nine months. Um, uh. So mo moving on to uh, the uh, the next subtopic of discussion here, uh, what do you think about the graphics? A unique sort of mix between, I guess, cartoonish and uh, real world type graphics that they decide to go with? The, it gives me a sort of Skyward Sword feel, which gave me a mix of Twilight Princess and Wind Waker vibes going on, which is what I yeah. still get from this game, is a sort of Wind Waker-y Twilight Princess feel. Yeah, that's what it kind of feels like to me, because it's very much a mix of, of those two. Regardless of, of those what two. I feel about them, though, the game looks beautiful. Yeah. One thing I did notice, did Link always have an earring? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Pretty much. Link, in Skyward Sword, Link had to do these uh, trials with the great dragons, and when he did, he got this uh, earring that allowed him to breathe underwater oh. for a yeah. longer amount of time and allowed him to and swim in, better. In Ocarina of Time, adult Link had a uh, blue loop earrings, I believe. Which were the callback to the earrings from in yeah. the previous titles, like Skyward Sword. Or well, I don't think the model itself had earrings, but in the official artwork for the game, Link always has had earrings. I think, I think the model had earrings. It might have been put in the 3DS version of Ocarina, but I can't remember right yeah. man. I must have never noticed. They're they're small, and back in back when we were kids, we probably wouldn't. have uh, probably not many people noticed and earrings aren't really a thing that stand out on characters a lot it's usually one of those fine details that only that, that only like cosplayers or like really dedicated players would really pick up on I think probably also because the game's in uh, 1080p HD so it's easier to spot yeah so next thing that I wanted to bring up uh, because you had this on your list here Roxy uh, what do you think about the delay? I mean, uh, it is gonna be a little over four years between when this game was announced and, uh, when it'll be released. Uh, do you think it's worth it? I thought it was announced in 2014, Scott. 2013. Was it? Really? Because I remember the trailer being 2014. Yeah, it, it was first announced in 2013, and and by the time uh, it comes out, which is, we're assuming March, but will probably be later in the year, um, it, it will be over four years. I remember seeing a release date somewhere during the conference, actually. It's gonna be, at the latest, March 31st, because I went and pre-ordered a copy of it at GameStop and they told me that what's on their computers is March 31st, 2017. Yeah. Seeing how much time and effort they put into the game, it, it sort it. of makes sense now why it's taking them such a long amount of time to complete it. I mean, everything that we've seen from the new trailers that just came out a few days ago uh, if what they're saying is accurate, that it repre represents uh, less than 2% of the overall gameplay, um, 
I it's mean, they... supposedly 12 times as big as Twilight Princess. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and Twilight Princess kind of already had a big map. Yeah, it was I was actually it was quite a quite a significant size larger than um than Ocarina of Time, actually. I think it's about at least four times the size, if it not was... larger. And there wasn't really a snowy area other when the Zora domain got frozen in Ocarina. Which means yeah. that the world is bigger than what we realize. Oh yeah. Be because in Ocarina, like I just said, the only time anything was ever frozen was in the Zora Domain. But in Twilight Princess, we obviously see that there is a Zora Domain and then a snowy area nearby. But it's not the Zora Domain. No. Uh yeah, from, I really want this game. From what I've read, uh, Breath of the Wild uh, pushes the Wii U's uh, technical specs to its limits uh, because of the way they design the game and how large it is overall. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they end up having to do what they did with Xenoblade Chronicles X and release a bunch of patches that you can download. That way the game doesn't lag for... Yeah. Uh, disc users because yeah. if you download it it's obviously going to come with those patches just like the download version of Xenoblade Chronicles X did yeah so well. that, that leads us back to the main question having to wait this long for the game I mean obviously it looks yes. beautiful and you you guys are big fans of it um, but do, do you think that the overall time span was appropriate? Do you think that future Zelda games should also take this amount of time, maybe even longer, when they come out with the next title, or...? I uh. think that the delay for this specific game has been really long, but now that we've seen more gameplay of it, we've seen that we've got a new trailer, after looking at all of it, I say that it's worth it, even though I was pretty I kicked agree, off. Yeah. That it got delayed to 2017, but I can I can see it being worth it now. Oh yeah, that's I'm of the same opinion. It's but as for the other part of the question is should they should they keep this standard of development time period? I that's kind of hard to say because it all depends on the scope of the game, how long it takes to develop all the assets. Because for this, probably one of the reasons why it took so long was because they had to probably had developed a whole ton more uh, ton more of the engine and uh, assets like that uh, from the ground up because of just how massive the world is. Uh, but for future titles, if they're keeping the same world size, they may not have to do that. Uh, but it's kind of a case-by-case -case basis. On, on the whole, on that part of the question. I, it seems to me that uh, I, I would say probably one of the uh, biggest contributors to the amount of time it took for this game has got to be the physics engine. Because oh, I mean, yeah. when, when we saw in the trailers of you know, uh, Link uh, hitting a, uh, a gigantic boulder multiple times and the, and the boulder just crushing enemies and and depending on how you hit it and how hard you hit it and, and all of that, I mean, that that's the first time a Zelda adventure has taken that into account. Yeah, well, there's... Well, this is the first time a, the Zelda adventure has taken a lot of things into account. Yeah, there's survival parts, there's... There, there's... You guys saw the little uh, sound, det sound detector and the temperature thermometer down yep. near the mini-map, right? Yeah. And I thought so, that was yeah. really cool, because now the enemies <gasps> can hear you whenever you try and sneak up on them. Yeah, so there's sneaking, there's uh, survival, obviously, uh, there's weapon like, durability. You have to change your clothes depending on the scenario and the weather that mm. you're in. So let's say you go into a mountainous area that's got a bunch of snow and it's really cold, and you're going in there with your regular clothes. You're gonna freeze, and you're gonna you're gonna get cold, and you're gonna start losing health. But if you change yep. into weapon or uh, clothes that give you more cold resistance and keep you warmer, 
you won't lose that health and you'll stay warm. Yeah, from the looks of it, when you on that it the that thermometer there, uh, the the pointer indicates the current outside, like the current temperature of the area, and the blue the blue limits there indicates sort of like the dead zo- the deadly zone for that, and the red indicates the deadly zone for heat. Because when they switched into something warmer during the gameplay, the blue zone actually got smaller to sort of compensate, saying, oh yeah, you're wearing something warm, so it takes... Now you need to get down to this temperature for it to be dangerous, kind of thing. It takes into account his body heat. Yeah. And it's just like... <sighs> it's, uh, it's, it's weird, because when I look at the game overall... And, and I know that you pointed this out before, Sarah, where you said it, it kind of reminded you of Elder Scrolls. And yeah, t- Elder Scrolls Hyrule. <laughs> yeah, it, t- to me, it kind of reminds me of like an MMO, except it's not online and it's not multiplayer, because when you have things like crafting, when you have weapon durability, when you have the physics that you have to take into account, um, it, it seems like they're going for uh, Actually, a very realistic feel. Sorry, I correct my statement. It's not Elder Scrolls Hyrule, it's Fallout Hyrule. Because it's apocalyptic Hyrule. <laughs> or post-apocalyptic. <laughs> Fallout Hyrule, everyone! Hashtag that. No. Because, <laughs> like, it's, it's taking stuff from a bunch of different games. Not just MMOs or no, Sky, I know. Skyrim. I saw a post somewhere yesterday slash early this morning that talked about it about how uh, how the new Zelda game is taking place from, or taking things from like Dark Souls uh, the Elder Scrolls game uh, yeah. survival games, Assassin's Creed which, you know, some of this stuff took their stuff from previous Zelda games and then it, it kind of feels like they're catching up too, like the last several Zelda games we've had sort of followed a very similar old school formula and this one too this one feels like as you said they're taking all these aspects from other games it sort of feels like they're sort of catching up to the rest of all those adventure titles out there because a lot of those adventure titles have all these mechanics in them already and Zelda's finally the Legend of Zelda's finally realizing oh hey Let's try all this because this might this will make our game a little bit more immersive. Not that it wasn't immersive before, like I well, got lost in Twilight Princess and Ocarina of Time. Zelda for games hours, have been unique for how but... they've been for how they've been played. They've had yeah. a specific heart uh, or health oh, mechanism. Yeah. They've had magic, and they've always had like they've always been real unique compared to other adventure games. And now this Zelda game is unique from other Zelda games because it's not like the other ones. It's yeah. like you don't even have hearts that you can pick no, up you do. from cutting grass in this oh, game. Oh yeah. I was I was to... kind of disappointed in that. And we no rupees. I just realized. No, there's We're rupees. not in Hyrule. There's rupees. There's rupees? Yeah. It's been oh, said thank that there God. will be rupees in the game. Thank God. Because <laughs> there's also going to be towns and other NPCs. They just weren't being shown in yeah. at E3. That way, nothing from the story will get uh, spoiled for everyone. Uh, I'm going to be living in a shadow, the shadow of my my Nintendo Wii U when I, and then my TV for hours and months. I'm going to be diving into every little nook and cranny I can find in that in that Same. game and soaking up as much lore as I can and trying to figure out every little last detail. <sighs> One thing that you're probably happy about, Roxy, is that they confirmed there is no female Link in this game. <sighs> yeah, they, I, know, I remember Roxy they, they was have upset to about that possibility. The in order for that to happen. Yeah, and I'm not I... the only person that was of this idea. Yeah. And no, so... and I can under- I can understand that. Yeah. Yeah. In oh, the, actually, uh, in the discussion uh, yesterday, I, I believe uh, Al Numasan said that they had considered it, but they they 
I, I guess they more favored the traditional role of, of keeping they, they Link. They thought and about it, but then they were like, nah. Yeah. Will get Speaking of, actually, did you the 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 starting area, Temple of Resurrection, I believe it was. Yeah, I that, think that was the name of it. Yeah. So, what's the possibility of that stasis chamber actually being some sort of uh, special device to? to artificially resurrect uh, a new Link when Hyrule's in trouble? Not a clue. Because <laughs> we Cause don't I just know where it takes place. I know. <laughs> One uh. thing that I found neat was uh, the use of Amiibo, using the Wolf Link Amiibo and you get Wolf Link uh, as a partner. Even if it yeah, is, cool. even, even if you can only use him once a day, I mean, it's still better than nothing, right? I saw some gameplay from the Wolf Link Amiibo when Nintendo Minute and Gerard the Completionist were talking yeah. about it, and man, Wolf Link Ami Wolf Link in that game is a f bro. He looks out for you. He's yeah. all, hey man, there's a there's some food over here. You gonna go get the food? Let me go take out this enemy. I got you. I was like, Wolf Link damn. is Link's best friend. Yeah. Fallout, fall, fall Hyrule. <laughs> Sorry, and I don't say that as as a bad thing. I I adore this. Th I'm I adore the fact that they're taking all of this thing, and I say that with all of all. I say that with all of the love that I could possibly give to 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 this series. But yeah, Fallout Hyrule. I love it. I wonder though uh, how effective Wolf Link is in uh, let's say a boss fight. Because, I mean, it, it's in the wild, it's one thing, but if you're fighting a boss where you need to target a specific section of the boss in order to do damage... Um, I could see it as they might... Of course, there's no confirmation of this at all, or any, any rules on what... blah blah blah. But I could see it as maybe that you can't use him in certain areas. Like, you might not be able to take him into something like a trial, or... Uh, you might not be able to take him into a dungeon or into a boss fight, because that could. I'm pretty in sure my head that might use him in shrines and boss fights, because when you go to switch between your different runes, you have the amiibo symbol. Yeah. Uh, well, just because the the symbol's there doesn't mean you can use it, because it could be could it it could be a darkened out version of the symbol, it, like I buttons mean, darken it out and lighten up when you can use them. It, it was but. shown in pretty good light. Uh, I don't know, maybe. Uh, Not to part... mention Wolf Link's effectiveness is only going to be as good as the way, or how much health you give him in Twilight Princess and how far you've gotten in the Cave of Shadows. Yeah. Which, admittedly, I have done none of that. Yeah. I still have to pick up a Wii U and Twilight Princess HD, so I have done nothing of that yet. <laughs> I'm so behind. I mean, I, I will say it's interesting that they've tied it in like that, so... I mean, you're, you're able to essentially take some of your progress in Twilight Princess and carry it over and, and actually have uh, uh, a really good use out of it in, in the next entry. Yeah. That, to me, is a little bit more evidence that it's in the Twilight Princess timeline. That's just well, like I mean, a small little optional, so I don't think that should be taken as evidence. I know, I know. I, I'm I'm taking it as the Wolf Link isn't actually canon to the story. It's just like a added bonus game thing. But it's it it seems to suggest that there's a link that they, there's a link between the two. To me, anyway. That's just me. I'm I'm yeah. just I, I'm still surprised by the size of this thing. I mean the. The, the sheer concept of being able to climb up these huge walls and cliffs and uh, and cut down trees and it's it's just mind-boggling what they've been able to do with it I know it sorry I keep zoning out into the fantasy world of just like wanting to explore <laughs> everything <laughs> in that game just like ah, I'm I keep melting but what about the uh, voice acting? That... Ah! I don't know it... how much voice acting there's going to be. Yeah. But from what I heard, like, from the game itself, 
the voice acting sounds great, but I want to know who the chick is that's talking. It's it seems like that because when you t- when they talk to the old man during the gameplay footage, the old man doesn't have a voice actor. The old man just had the usual sort of sort of nonsense that was that's present in other in every other game. Can we harp uh, on how the old man looks like King uh, what's his face from Wind Waker? King of Red Lions in his human form. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh. He oh, looks How severe, do I not know that name? He looks yeah. severely similar. Actually, yeah. I like how he's just also called Mysterious Old Man. King like, Daphnis is his name. Yeah, Daphne is uh, Daph- Daphnis of Red Lions of Hyrule or something like that. He, his name is Daphnis Nohansen Hyrule yeah. in his human form and King of Red Lions in his boat form. Because he's a boat. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can uh, see the Could be something there. Could be something there. Maybe he, he is very similar to King Daphnis. Maybe he's uh this what where this game's version of Daphnis then. And at some point we'll have some sort of uh red lion chic type reveal of Oh hey, I'm actually the king of Hyrule. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> <laughs> also I know people are going to be incredibly mad. But Why? this link is right-handed. Yeah, I noticed that. I was just like, "Why?" But because there's no need for it to be him to be right-handed. It's not motion-controlled. The reason he's right-handed in this game is because of hardware design. That's from Anuma Sun himself. Really? Yeah. He the. From what I'm reading on Zelda Universe's um, article about it, this is straight from it. This time, series producer A.G. Alanuma told IGN editor Jose Otero it was again down to the hardware design. It shouldn't take it shouldn't take different hardware to make a character left-handed. Well, when you're using when you're making a game that's going to have as much content as this is. You're going to be pressed on what all you can do. Because like in Twilight Princess HD, you've got both versions of Link. You've got right hand and left hand. Yeah. But the only diff- the only reason you can have that is because of hero mode. And hero mode is just, I think, the Wii version. Yeah. So it's not like they're adding anything major into it that would cause them to take from other things that they could have added. Yeah, but the reason why they made Link right-handed in the Wii version was is because of, because of the motion right controls. Hand. Yeah. yeah. Is, and we don't seem to have that in this game unless there's an option for motion controls. Well, we have type. We have a type of motion control. We yeah, like have the gamepad full, for aiming, it seems, but... We don't have the full motion control swinging. Yeah. But like I said, when you're making a game as big as this is, it's just, you, you gotta give and take from a little bit for the whole of it all, I guess. Yeah, but... I mean, I'm not mad about it. There's I, nothing wrong with it. I'm not mad either. I'm just kind of confused confused about that that being the reason as a hard, uh, as it's a, uh, saying that it's a hardware limitation. Because in my... It they're really shouldn't be. <laughs> they're, they're using they, a lot of stuff, so... Yeah, but it really shouldn't be that much... Uh, there, is, there is no difference... There shouldn't be any difference in performance anyway between making Link right-handed or left-handed. It's literally just to, changing some values within the character itself. Well, not, not just the values. They would have to make all the animations for Link swinging, how Link acts... Because there's a lot that goes into it from changing oh, just one thing to another. Yeah, but what I mean is, like, if if they had started out with him as left-handed when they started building the game, then that shouldn't yeah, be any difference from being right-handed. Because it's literally just a, a value swap 
Like the X just become ne becomes negative or positive depending on which hand you're switching to in the animations or in the model. And boom, 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 we have, it's left-handed. We have no clue if he started out left-handed or not. Yeah. Well, judging by that, the fact that he's right-handed, they probably started... They probably started out with him as right-handed in the original build. Cause well, I could... if that's the case, then they wouldn't have to worry about limitations. Yeah. Or they wouldn't have to worry about it at all. What I think is that they started out with him left-handed, and something messed up to the point where they had to make him right-handed. Like, something has to yeah. go bump in order for them to change it. In the original footage that they released... What, last year? Was he right-handed or left-handed in that footage? Uh, I have no clue. You mean at the Game Awards? Uh, no, like the first little bit of footage the that we ever got. Back like in 2015? Yeah. Let me get to it. I've got the new one. He appears to be left-handed. He appears to be left-handed? From the thumbnail. I'm checking, the I'm checking the video out right now. Uh, gonna skip through it. If he was left-handed, you might be right. They may have run into some kind of problem that prompted them to switch it. I'm trying to figure out in my head what that problem might have been. He's he's not really using his uh sword in back from 2014, not 2015. Because it was yeah. June 10th. The only thing he's ever shown using in that specific trailer was the bow. Where he's got his left hand holding the bow and his right hand notching the arrow. Yeah. Because right now I'm watching the Guardian chase him through the woods right now. He used his left hand to throw off the hood notches the bomb arrows with the right hand, vaults off the horse, notches the arrow with his right hand, holding the bow with his left. I'm trying to see if I can get a glimpse of a sword on his back or not. I can check the gameplay trailer from IGN back in December of 2014. I'm trying to... I have to get through this trailer. The, for whatever this from is. From the looks of it, uh, the way his arrows are drawn, and uh, from what I remember of the f new footage, he's always been right-handed in this build. From the way it looks, uh, the character model looks, and where the arrows are drawn. And, and the way his... And that's the his, stuff uh, that they've been showing? No. Uh, in the, from the original uh, 2014 trailer, it looks like that he's right-handed. So, he may have always been right-handed yeah, from the whole thing. Because a sword is tilted towards the right side of his shoulder. Yeah. Oh. Oh well. I know people are going to be mad about it, but, and I'm am kind of a little irked about it. But ultimately, yeah, it just means it's easier for me to cosplay him. <laughs> If ever I want to cosplay him again, because I'm right-handed, so haha. -ha. I mean, my me on me coming. And I just earned myself the, uh... several, several mad comments <laughs> in the, from people watching this video. Hi, haters! I love you. <laughs> Something that they did change from December of 2014 to now is the map is no longer on the gamepad. They moved the map from the gamepad to the to on screen. Did they show the gamepad? Like, what's on the gamepad during the conference? I don't think so. No. They just said that the map is no longer on the gamepad. It's on the TV yeah. screen. But, in 2014, during the Game Awards, it was shown... The map was straight up shown on the gamepad. Okay. Which leaves the question of what What's is the, on the game pad being used for? Because from what I've read, it's not used for much of anything except for whenever Ooh. you switch it to from TV mode to gamepad mode. I'm curious now, then, that does that mean we might be able to use the GameCube controller for this? 
Uh, no clue, but we can use a pro controller. Mm. They've gone on record saying that. That's a good point, because you can access your inventory on the TV screen, too, so... Makes you wonder what uh, the point of the gamepad is, aside from using, like, the uh, the gyro controls. I, yeah, I always thought that the, the having the screen on the gamepad was always just a gimmick in ter for the Wii U. I can understand that for... understand having a dual screen for the Nintendo DS, because you're operating on a small screen, you don't want to clutter up uh, such a small surface area with too much information so it, it gives a it gives that second screen gives sort of overflow room for people developing for the Nintendo DS but for the Wii U you're operating on a normal sized TV you don't necessarily have that issue of uh, too much clutter on the screen because you can scale things down to compensate for that because you're it's a TV screen yeah, it, it depends on the game. Like, I know Roxy loves Splatoon and its use of the gamepad and other titles like Super Mario Maker where you draw on the gamepad to design the levels. I mean, some of them are, are really intuitive like that, but for the most part, a lot of the games could probably do without it, especially the ones that uh, don't rely on the gyro or the motion controls there. Yeah. Like, Super Smash Bros. Uh, doesn't use the gamepad at all, I don't think. It it's does just as a, a controller and as a TV screen. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. And, like, it doesn't have it, a dedicated sort of setup as to why you would want to use it other than just like, oh, hey, I don't like looking at the TV screen. I'm just going to look at my own little private thing here. You can Let's also change the uh, appearance on the gamepad. Whenever you're playing on the TV screen, you can tap the gamepad. And it'll show the characters' portraits and their percentage. Yeah. But But Smash is a really bad example because you have so many controllers you can use. Oh yeah. So uh, you Wii Remote, Wii Remote Nunchuck, uh Pro Controller, Game I say Game Key Controller, Gamepad, the uh, Classic Controller, Hori Gamepad. There's just so many. But that precisely my point. There's no real reason as to why you'd want to use the gamepad other than you just want to have your own little private but screen to watch the match on. No it doesn't really give much of... Gamepad hmm? is literally the best controller for Smash 4. Really? Yeah. Because there's no lag input on the gamepad. But I have to is... use my DS. There... Yeah, it's the too DS big. is also a controller. Yeah, um, the... the... The gamepad is too big for me, and I'm so used to playing D Smash Bros. on the DS, I just use my DS. Yeah, that's how I was at the beginning, but then I got used to using the gamepad. And there's yeah. literally no lag in the controller. Whereas if you use a gamepad controller, you have a little bit of input lag. Okay. Well, I do want to get through a couple uh, of other points here before we wind down the Zelda portion. Pokemon! I I know we have a bunch of other games to talk about. Um, so, uh, what are your opinions on some of the new weapons? See, the way the durability system works, uh, that type of thing. There's a goddamn pitchfork. <laughs> we can use a pitchfork as a weapon. <laughs> yeah, you just so want to cool. take the pitchfork and you just want to throw it at the enemy. Yes! I'm gonna I liked... go fight. Gan I'm gonna go fight Calamity Ganon with a pitchfork, <laughs> and I'm gonna be in my boxers while I do it. I got a kick of that uh, brunette girl uh, going around with the bombs and the and the magnet magnesis ability. Uh, uh, going around that, she was. You could tell she was nervous, but the, just what she was doing, like picking up and tossing it everywhere, I kind of got a kick out of that. But. Chico or whatever her name is. I think so. Or, it was either Chico or Audrey. They I think it was the... Audrey. Chico. Uh, it was uh, Audrey, uh, the one with the uh, black arm. Uh, yeah, arm gloves. it was Audrey. She was yeah. doing way better than Bill was. Ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bill caught himself on fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn it, Bill. <laughs> hey, I like the I like the segment where Chico was uh, entering what was it that runes area 
and uh, it was the spiked balls moving around, and she killed herself. Well, there were two areas times. with spiked balls. Uh, I just liked how she just wanted to terrorize the book, the the book goblins. Everyone. That's wanted all she to wanted to do. The book that, that was... She wanted to burn down the trees. I remember she when she picked up the fire arrows for the first time. She's like, first thing to do, burn down the trees. <laughs> yep. It's <laughs> like yes, because that's exactly what I'd do. Oh. I, I will say, I mean, I uh, that wasn't genius, so using the magne magnesis part to uh, you know, move those spiked balls out of the area. I mean, that's uh, look in any other Zelda game, you wouldn't be able to do that, right? So. Oh yeah, this this one looks like it has because it seems it's designed as a sandbox. It looks like that you can go about completing things differently each time like you can use different things uh to do the same thing and achieve the same goal which means my playthrough of the game won't be the same as uh, your playthrough of the game or somebody else's playthrough of the game which is what was at the heart of the original zelda franchise zelda game way back in the 80s i think it was like something that we haven't actually said yet that we probably should talk about because this is a major thing. Yeah. The stamina bar yeah. has returned. Stamina bar is something that was introduced in Skyward, Skyward Sword. Sword and was yeah. very poorly implemented because of how fast the stamina bar would run out. This one doesn't seem to be running out as fast, though. I will say that. It does, it does seem to have a longer life it, than... I feel like they implemented it better, but I'm still yeah. not a hundred percent happy with it. Cause I just want to be able to run around like a god dang. I, I, yeah. I tried not to steal a game grumps line, <laughs> so I just kind of cut myself off. Like I can I can see why people are bothered by it, but as someone who who's who's played through the entirety of Skyrim multiple multiple times, I'm used to the idea of a stamina bar. So it being brought into this title, which it's uh, into this Zelda game, doesn't really bother me, especially since it seems to, it kind of seems to fit with that idea of with this exploration idea, because you, you don't want to be able to just like climb a sheer face. Non-stop. Yeah. And just like be able to climb like a 600 foot mountain without any sort of uh, like, concern of you falling. Realistically, you would need to have some kind of stopping point to catch your breath. I can exactly, see why yeah. it was added back into it. Yeah. I'm just not 100% happy with no, it, it because I hate stamina bars. No, I know. I know a lot of people aren't, aren't going to be, but I think it fits. And I'm used to it, so I don't really... I mean, I don't really mind. I mean, the good thing about it, though, is they, they showed in the trailer, even when you only have a little bit of stamina left, you can make, like, one large jump to, like, uh, make a final push to get to the top of a cliff, for example. Yeah. So, oh. I, I don't think it's going to be as bad as what people are complaining about, but, I mean, I, I do see how people Just might be upset wait until the limitation you're in the middle of, of a boss fight and you try doing a spin attack and then suddenly you're out of stamina yeah i love i love uh, I, on the same sort of theme i love the idea that uh for gaining health back you just have the insta feed mechanic from the menu again yeah freeze time I like that too. i'm done back yeah. speaking of food i like the way that they did this so like you said earlier your run might not be the same as my run. Like, yeah. you may go into a cold area with all the clothes that are needed to stay warm in that area, whereas I might try to go, you know, balls to the walls and <laughs> use the spicy peppers to make, like, some different kind of spicy food to up my cold resistance for a certain amount of time. Because yeah. you love being on a time limit, right? Doing a speed run? I mean, I've done Majora's Mask in like a week. I'm pretty sure I could do it faster if I felt like it, so. <laughs> time oh. time limits are only as bad as the mission makes it. You would oh, know yeah. about that, wouldn't you, Scott? 
Exactly. <laughs> what? I don't get this uh, inside joke. <laughs> <laughs> From Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. Scott uh, loves having time limits in Toad missions. Uh, <laughs> it's a pain in the butt, let me tell you. No, you love it. Slash sarcasm <laughs> detector goes off. I think we've covered most of uh, what was on our list here. Was there anything that you want to finish up with, either of you two? Yes, uh, about three more things. Three more? Right. Yep. Sure. There's no companion. You have no actual companion with you throughout the game. You Something the tells old, me that... You have the old no. man who appears with you every now and again, and you have the wolf link amiibo, but other than that, you have no companion. Uh, something tells me that that voice that we heard at the beginning of the game might end up being... May, will probably end up being uh, Link's companion. If that voice because... is Zelda, then I doubt it. Oh, yeah, that's true. It could be Zelda. But it could be a fairy. It could be... It could be something something else there there could be many possible explanations as to where that voice who that voice is and personally i think it's probably a companion of some sort and we they are just not able to show us that companion within the limits of the demo that they've been showing us at the moment and it's probably something we won't we might not know it until like the first big first story point after we leave so i'm doing a quick check because i can't remember if they said that there was no companion or not i don't think they mentioned anything about a companion actually they might view wolf link as the companion and that might be the reasoning the only maybe companion but that would you get is wolf link so that if, if they did that then that would make wolf link canon to the game and because not everyone has a, a wolf link amiibo I don't see them as doing that and I so because that would limit sort of player access to the lore I guess maybe hmm. I don't see wolf link as being the official in in game canon of canon uh, this is only as I don't have anybody coming out of my sword and saying Hey, there's a 99% <laughs> probability you will die. Or, hey, listen. Hey, hey watch out. listen. Hey, listen. Hey, watch out. Listen. Zelda's over this way. Hey, you're you not going the right way. You're the best companion. <laughs> anyway, that was the first thing I wanted to say uh, on the last three things. So, uh, hold on. Second thing Temple of Time has returned yes what why is the temple of time back if hyrule was actually destroyed like they said the temple of time should not be intact it should be destroyed well the castle is still standing so that doesn't it doesn't have to be the case because uh, as we saw in the in the trailer there the castle was still standing and was being engulfed by some sort of dark entity. But that's a so, different castle. That's probably something that was built in from Calamity I, Ganon, who is probably the main villain of the game. I still think it looks a lot like the Twilight Princess Castle, so I'm going to say that it's the Twilight Princess Castle. But because also on that, the Temple of Time wasn't in Hyrule, isn't wasn't in uh, Castle Town in Twilight Princess. It was in the Sacred Grove. It was in a completely different location. Moved. Yeah. It which was moved to the weird. secret groove. So which is weird. It, well, I know. I, I, when they did that in Twilight Princess, I was like, why isn't it just in the normal spot? And like, the why? last thing I wanted to say that we haven't touched on. The new type of bombs. They're not bombs I... with, a t with a set timer. You can now just chuck a bomb and blow it up whenever you please. And you have square bombs! Yeah. That's so cool! I'm, I'm actually really excited about that. Because <laughs> how many times in like in, every, in any other games where we've had a bomb and we wanted to put it somewhere, but it was on a hill, and thus we had to like time our roll so that it rolled down and blew up at the right place. 
I'm just sad that bomb bowling isn't making a return. Bob bombs? Bomb bowling. Hey, who Inside doesn't who doesn't oh, bomb love bomb bowling? <laughs> bomb boy. Scott feels me on this. <laughs> oh, from uh, Triforce Heroes. No, from Skyward Sword. How do I not when, remember this? When you would hold the Wii Remote down, it would change the arrow from instead of you throwing it, you would roll it. Oh, yeah. And Sky, yeah, okay. Bomb bowling. Bomb bowling, yeah. I remember that. That was the best thing to be introduced from Skyward Sword. I was confused because I was hearing Bomb Boy. That's why I went to <laughs> Triforce Heroes, because I thought you meant Link in the bomb suit. Oh, I'm like, geez. okay, sure. I don't know why you'd want that back, but okay. What um, about those bomb arrows? Did we see those in... I, I know we yeah, saw it in the they, trailer. but The bomb arrows have been shown in the actual gameplay. Gameplay? Yeah, I'm kind of... you've got the regular arrows, you've got fire <laughs> arrows, and bomb arrows. <laughs> I like it. Any and more explosions better. I like explosions. Explosions and fire. I'm not psychotic, I swear. <laughs> You're gonna set. <laughs> I'm all just a of gamer. On fire. <laughs> oh, one um, other thing uh, to bring up is that there is no difference at all between the Wii U and NX versions. Yeah, that's, that's really kind of cool. good, actually. That means that you won't have to worry about missing something in the NX version that's not in the Wii U, and vice versa. What I'm really curious, actually, is back onto the bomb subject. I want to. Uh, I hope bomb chews make a return at some I point in the game. Cause, doubt they will. Well, because they would still, even though we have like ta bombs that we can set off on our own and they're round and square, I, I bomb chews could still so serve a purpose because those bombs can't really climb walls. Bomb chews can, and having a bomb chew that you can set off remotely on your own. That would well, be seeing, amazing. Seeing as we only have like two sets of bombs, the sur the sphere and the square, I doubt we'll get bomb shoes. Well, it, it, it will. It would probably be its own separate item because it's always been its own separate item. This well, new I mean, this new take on the bomb is probably just a modified item. What? Shouldn't the square bombs be their own separate item? No, because they operate in more or less they the same way. You're just changing the, the shape. With bomb shoes. Square there. bombs will stay split wherever you set them, whereas yeah. a sphere bomb will roll. So shouldn't I... the square bombs be their own kind of item? Because it's it's a rune and not an item that you got for the bombs. Yeah. Uh, I can kind of see your point, but I don't see why they would be. They're a, a separate item. I, 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 I still think that bomb shoes could still have a functionality within... Within uh, Breath of Wild, not Breath of Wind, Breath of Wild, Breath of within the game, because I I just want bomb juice. I love bomb juice. Bomb juice is the most annoying thing for me, except in Phantom Hourglass, where you can map out where they go. <laughs> yeah, admittedly, aiming bomb juice is a pain, but having a remote, having a bomb chew that you can just place down and remotely detonate on your own would be hilarious because just 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 imagine you're 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 at a distance from a bo from a bo uh, a bo goblin bo goblin camp uh and you're just bomb you sit there just watch wait you just why go why not just move to a different location and then roll the bomb down from the side of the hill but if you're not up the hill if, if they're on the top of the hill then you can't do that you just the Put the bomb tree down, watch it go up the hill, go Wee! detonate, three, two, also, one, poof! I'm pretty sure that the Bokoblin's cave houses, or houses hmm. in general, have a way of blowing stuff up from the inside without you ever having to use a bomb. Since I saw in the live gameplay... Oh yeah, the gunpowder barrels. Well, not even just the gunpowder barrels. Chica took the bow, aimed it in the eye of the house where yeah. a little fire thing was being held up at she shot that it fell to the ground and the entire area got engulfed in flames okay but yeah there's probably going to be a ton more items than what they've shown us because it is a zelda game that that's 
that's like par for the course. So if they don't have bomb shoes, I will I'll be a little bit disappointed, but I want bomb shoes. <laughs> Just cuz I I want to hear the little poof. I love bomb shoes. Always about but, the bomb shoes, isn't it? <laughs> but it is an op it is a sandbox theme, so you, just because you have them doesn't mean you have to use them. It looks like so. You may you may not have to use them, so you may not have to deal with them if you don't want to. All right. Well, that uh, seems to be a pretty uh, yeah. It pretty much covers most of what we wanted to talk about. Uh, anything else you guys wanted to add in? Nintendo, Get take my game. money. When I have it. <laughs> Here's my money. Buy the game. <laughs> when I have it. Buy a Wii U and buy the game. Oh yeah. Hands down. I know people who aren't fans of 3D Zeldas who are going and buying this game. Yeah. Just, just buy the goddamn game. I agree. Alright, well on that note, we should give our scores for the trailers and content that we've seen so far. Uh, so I... I'm, I'm going to go first. Uh, now, you guys already know I'm not the biggest Zelda fan on the planet by yeah. any means of the word. Um, but I will give this game, so far, I will give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, Roxy, you're up. You sure you want me to go next? Yes. You sure you want me to go next? Yes. Okay, my answer should be obvious then. I give it three yeah. Triforces out of three Triforces. I agree. <laughs> That's a perfect 10 out of 10 for those who aren't <laughs> smart. I wholeheartedly agree. There, 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 there's no ifs, ands, or buts. All right, so uh, now we know where everyone stands on Zelda. Uh, the second major game that was uh, not necessarily announced, but... Uh, a lot of gameplay shown at E3, as everyone Color knows. Color Splash, right? What? Color Splash, right? I was, that was going to be Sun and Moon. Third! And, and, I, <laughs> and we are not devoting a lot of time on that, because there is going to be a lot of flame wars on the internet. Um, but I actually want to get into Pokemon Sun and Moon first. Oh. Um, because obviously, um, aside from Zelda, that was the other big uh, reveal we got to see some more footage and I mean uh, I guess <laughs> yeah I, I think it's only appropriate we devote some time to it I mean it, it is yeah. kind of the 20th anniversary and all and we I are mean, talking about the Nintendo press conference so N Nintendo you know gave it 45 minutes when they gave Zelda two days <laughs> I know <laughs> exactly I guess we can devote like. Uh, I, I, it's got to be at least fifteen minutes. Am I right? <laughs> I yeah, mean, fair I enough. Guess. To be f okay, I'll be full disclosure here. I didn't watch the conference live. I watched it later in the day and completely skipped over Sun and Moon. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like. I don't yeah. blame you. All the Pokemon <laughs> trainers out there are standing with their pitchforks, ready to throw you <laughs> into the fire. Hi, haters. I, I love you all. <laughs> I don't blame you at all. <laughs> I will say, I did, I did tune in a little bit when it first, when the press conference first started at noon in our time zone, or my time zone. Um, so I did watch a little bit of it. Um, and it does look pretty. Uh, the customization is a is a cool thing that Call I it. think. What? <laughs> customization coming back. I called it. They have announced that for they announced that like no, a few weeks they ago. Didn't didn't announce they? it. They just showed that you could have different skin. Uh, your character could have different skin color. They never announced customization until yesterday. Ah. Uh, well, yeah. They have like. Yeah, they were showing off how you customize your character, like the hair and the skin and the hair colors and all that shebangs. Uh, of course, the introduction of the of like the three Pokemon, and then Maya looked at me and said, "We have to get going to it. Get going for uh, okay, bye." <laughs> Pause. Came back. Okay, skip to Zelda. Well, there wasn't a lot that was revealed in 
terms of the gameplay, but uh, some of the points that I did mark down, I do want to touch on. <laughs> uh, I was talking to you about this before, Roxy. Uh, all of the trainers in the battle finally being displayed, uh, full 3D models. That's pretty exciting. You have no idea how happy that makes me. It, really? It, it feels because like they it... haven't done this. They have not done this since Colosseum and Gale of Darkness. And I'm getting such a big Colosseum and Gale of Darkness vibe from Sun and Moon, and nobody realizes how happy that makes me. Because those are the best games! I can't believe <laughs> it took me, them Gen this Winners. long to, to do it. I mean, you, you'd think... I mean, Colosseum came out, what, 13 years ago? Something like that? Yeah, I, I think it was close to 13 years ago that Coliseum came out, and that was the first game, I mean, home console or handheld combined, where you had the full 3D trainer models. And I, I understand the idea of trying to get it into a smaller handheld cartridge, okay, maybe the technology didn't exist and they had to develop it and whatnot, but it just Oh, the technology feels, existed. It, it, it just Not feels for like handheld. there was so much of a gap. I mean, you, you had Coliseum, you had XD, you had Battle Revolution, and then even oh, when X and it. Y came out in, uh, in 2013, we still didn't have the full trainers displayed in battle, and, and it, it just it took them so long to so, finally incorporate that again, when they had it! Something we also didn't have with Coliseum and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire is full analog movement. Yep. We had, we had limited analog. Oh yeah, up, down, left, right. Up, down, left, right, and in the... Then you had diagonal movement, but you had straight diagonal movement. Yeah. Now, yeah. we have full 3D analog movement. Something they haven't done since Coliseum and Gale of Darkness, and it makes me so freaking happy. <laughs> One other thing that I noticed as well, uh, I, I guess maybe this is uh, a sort of nostalgic touch to this, is when uh, you're actually in a battle, and, and by the way, the, the music and the sound effects are beautiful. I mean, I, I love the battle themes and everything, but um, when you're in a battle uh, on the touch screen, um, the fact that they're displaying the attacks vertically like they used to do pre-Ruby Sapphire. A uh, bit, bit of a, a change. They didn't do it vertically. Yes, vertically. No, they didn't. Back in uh, the original Red, Blue, and Gold, Silver? Scott, I've got Blue on my 3DS and I've been playing it. The attacks aren't vertical. They're, they're Not in battle. During in menus, they're vertical, but not in battle. That, that's what I'm talking about. In, in the way they're displayed. Like, in, in as of Ruby and Sapphire, you had the, I, I guess, more of a horizontal display, where you had attack one, and then attack two to the right of that, and then three below, and then four below that. Sort of like in a, a rectangular horizontal display. But for the originals, it, it was sort of a vertical menu. And, and that's sort of the vibe that I'm getting, the way that they're displaying it in Sun and Moon, where they're, they're listing it on the right side, all in one narrow column, instead of using up the entire touchscreen. But it was only listed vertically in the party menu, not in battle. Because in battle, it's always been move one on the left, move two on the right, move three on the bottom left, move four on the bottom right. And it's been that way since Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 4, Gen 5, and Gen 6. It's only in the party menu whenever it's listed vertically, and it's always been listed vertically. Are we playing the exact same games, Roxy? I've got... I have <laughs> Blue open right now. And if I will you get into, into a battle, battle in Pokemon Blue, there... Look at the menu where you're selecting your attack. The the attacks are listed vertically. You have Tackle and then Growl right under that, and then Vine Whip right under that, and then you'd have like Razor Leaf under that for Bulbasaur. Oh, okay, I get it. I'm retarded. Never mind. 
I, 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 that's why I was completely lost while well, you were saying that. It, it was Ruby I, Sapphire where they changed that design up, and that design what it has is, stuck is since that third I was, gen. What I was getting... Is it's got the fight, it's got the actual menu horizontally, and then when you press it, it's got the moves vertically. Yeah. I'm gonna go on and kill this pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I, I like I, I like how they've done it. I mean, they've especially the new designs in battle, um, where they're they're actually showing you the stats on the touch screen. Well, that's why they made them vertical. Yeah, for more room. That way, you can still view the stats of your Pokemon and your opponent's Pokemon without having to close the menu. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, and, and another nice touch is having that small eye information icon next to each of the four attacks. So instead of having to press L and A or, or go back into the Pokemon menu and then summary and all that, um, you can just hit the eye and then you get a full description. Yeah, I'm so glad they're doing that. Now, now if I want to see if the Thousand Arrows damages flying type Pokemon, I can just either press L and A or press the I for information button. Yeah, it, it's it's a lot more convenient. But um, one one thing that I was a little bit uh, I I guess unsure of is I know uh, when we were talking about before you mentioned well originally you mentioned the concept of triple typing and having six attacks. Uh, I don't I've, know. I. I'm taking back anything I said about triple typing, but I'm standing by the six attack thing. Just because it hasn't been shown doesn't mean the game... If they said the game footage isn't final. Yeah. They've said that. Because I've got it from a source who literally hasn't gotten a thing wrong saying that there's going to be six moves. In it, so. I wonder how they're going to do that now, because... Uh, well, unless there's a scroll bar that appears on the touch screen, because the current attacks take up more than 50% uh, of the width horizontally. What will probably happen is that the moves will shrink in text size, as well as like bubble size once you get like the fifth and sixth move. Mm, yeah, that's true. Which actually leads us into uh, the next change. Um, which I, I know you didn't have a big deal with last night, but you did say a lot of people were angry about uh, the fact and that... it's a stupid reason to get angry about it. <laughs> I have to bring it up. Um, the fact that after your first encounter was a particular Pokemon, uh, the game now shows you underneath each of your different attacks whether that move is super effective regularly effective or not effective on well that i mean pokemon if it's regularly again. effective it's not going to show anything it shows effective it shows if it's super effective or not very effective it doesn't show if it's normally effective yeah it does no it doesn't did you not look at the battle royal screen did you not look at when he fought litton as poplio and poplio had disarming voice when I'm sure that when uh, Poplio was facing off against Pichu, that uh, there was it, it was either Pichu or it was in the Battle Royal. There was uh, uh, just a generic effective line. Again, game footage not final, but uh... I've got the footage pulled up, and I'm going straight to the metal. And I can guarantee you, it doesn't say anything. So, to the mechanic, so it's this thing where it tells you, after you use the ability on a certain Pokemon, it'll tell you uh, whether or not it's super effective or not effective. Okay, let's say I choose Litten and my opponent has Rowlet. After the first initial battle, my, it will tell me whenever I battle another Rowlet if, say, Ember is super effective on it, which isn't a big deal. Because no. it's always, the games, ever since Red and Blue, have always told you if a move was super effective or not. 
Now it just tells you it beforehand after you battle it one time. That's nothing to complain about and say, Man, you keep hang hanging Pokemon's dead, which are actual comments I've seen. Because people are stupid enough to think that just because it's telling us beforehand now, after one battle of not knowing, that it's hand-holding and that it's dead, when it's not. It's people whining over chain. It's that elitist. They that they are just... It's stupid. It's every time... It's an accessibility thing. Every time uh, a developer makes a game a little bit more accessible for the masses, the elitists, and there's an elitist, and there are elitists for every game out there, the elitists get all up in arms and like, Oh, we're not special anymore. You're making it so easy for for like the the peons to come up to our level. We're not special. It's the elitists wanting to be special. These people aren't even elite. I've seen them battle. They are awful. They think they're elitists. A lot of elitists think they're elitists. Like in Final Fantasy 14, I see this a lot too, where a lot of people, when going into a dungeon. They're like, oh, you have to know this, this, and this, this, and they themselves haven't even gone through the dungeon yet. And it's like, okay, you're an elitist wannabe. Okay, I've gotten to the Poplio versus Litten fight. All right, okay. Uh, it, if it's an attacking move, it'll say it's effective. See, I, didn't see I told that you. Before. What videos are you looking at, Roxy? I'm still looking at the one right now. I just said Jeez. I'm going back on my statement. Jeez. <laughs> hey, at least he's willing to correct, say that he's wrong when he's wrong. Because I didn't see the effective symbol before, but I saw super effective and not very effective for water gun and disarming voice. And I didn't see the effective on growl, which, I mean, why would it be effective at all? Excuse me. Huh. One thing to consider as well, okay. though, is that in a competitive environment where the opponents are always switching out, it, it's the effectiveness being displayed isn't necessarily going to help you, <laughs> because just because well, it's at not going to hinder you either. Yeah, just because at that particular time where you see that a uh, dark type move is super effective on a ghost type, and then you use it, and then oh, sorry, the opponent switched out, brought in. Uh, a fighting type and and your move which you thought was super effective based off of what was seen in the battle menu now isn't very effective that's on the player's yeah. fault for not thinking ahead yeah it's again it's just a little stupid little quality of life thing that makes it easier for uh, newer players who aren't good at memorizing to and I mean I said this to Scott good. last night it doesn't hinder memorization. It doesn't no. reduce skill. It enhances and makes memorization faster. Exactly, so because the information's right there. Here. It. This is where we sort of got into a bit of a, a uh, disagreement last night. Because, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not angry at it. All I'm saying is that I, I can somewhat understand why some people are frustrated. Because in, in the past... Uh, and, and this is where I disagree with you there, Roxy. The, the fact that you would have to memorize the type chart and at the same time memorize the opposing Pokémon's types before using a move, it, it sort of led to a little bit of, of skill in the sense of having to retain all that knowledge in your head. But at the same time, I can also understand um, what Masuda-san was talking about in, in terms of accessibility, whereas some of the newer players don't necessarily know that, let's say, a Dark-type move is neutral against a Metagross, right? So in, in that sense, they incorporated that to help him out. Yeah. Until you said that, that the Dark-type was effective against Metagross, I didn't know that, and I'll probably forget it tomorrow. And... <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's why they probably added this feature into the game. I mean, exactly. I, 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 again, to your point though, Roxy, I mean, it, it doesn't take anything away, and, and competitive-wise, again, it, it really doesn't have any effect if you're in an online match or whatnot. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, I mean, it's neither here nor there. But, yeah. I mean, some the people, they, they will complain about it, and, you know, because they're, they're not used to it, right? They're used to the older ways of, of how the game's used to be. They're used to the move, tell, to the game telling them that it's super effective after it's used. Like, oh man, yeah. I need confirmation that Water Gun is super effective on Charmander after I've used it. Now it's telling me it's super effective before I used it. What will I do? No! <laughs> it's yeah. literally how I assume everyone sounds like. He thinks that it's hand holding and that Pokemon's dead because of it. it. Again, it's it's the the elite players don't care. Those that are complaining about it think they're elite players who don't want who who want to continue feeling special and saying, "Oh, it's too easy for everyone now. I can't be special." One of the things that I do hope they've changed this time around is when a weather condition like Sandstorm or Hail does damage that it affects all the Pokémon at the same time instead of saying Pokémon number one took damage from Sandstorm, Pokémon number two took damage, number three took damage. Didn't they always do it that they took damage at the same time? No. Or like it's, one it's, right it's, after the other? It, it's always been one at a time for the weather conditions. For for it's attacks. It's always been that... one at a time for any move. Like even an earthquake, it's one at a time. Not in the more recent titles. For for multi-hit moves like uh, heat wave and earthquake, it would hit all opponents or at least two of the three simultaneously. Would it? Yeah. I know that at least one. That at least the. Uh at least one Pokemon would go down sooner than the other one. Yeah. So it still has that instance of it goes after one than the other. It, it, it still has a bit of a delay, but, I mean, with regards to the weather effects, they've, they've never changed that. Whether it's Sandstorm, Hail, um, or, or even, um, I, I guess, move effects in the sense of Fire Spin or Whirlpool that does damage at the end of the turn, it would still target each one individually, even if more than one was affected by that condition. And for the sake of time, I would hope that they would speed it up by showing that uh, effect happening simultaneously on all of the uh, participants. Mm. The uh, the new Battle Royal mode sounds interesting, though. I, I can see uh, it just I'll... being three versus one, though. <laughs> all That's literally what it is. It's three v one. But it's it's three v one, but it all depends on who's the one that the three want to gang up on. Yeah. But on that note, I mean, I I also hope that they improved the multiplayer experience because if they're placing a focus on battle royals, back. Uh, Back when they first created X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, one of the most frustrating things that I had a, a lot of gripes with uh, was the fact that whenever you were trying to get into a multiplayer battle with three other random people, unknown people, across the internet, it would literally take forever because you would get two out of the three who would accept the challenge and then the third doesn't, and then... The, the list on the touch screen refreshes and then you've lost those people, right? That's an issue with a lot of games though. That's that's not just a Pokemon issue and that's gonna be there. That's a networking issue, not a game issue. Well, it may not only be networking, it may just be that the third person didn't want a multi-battle on the climb. I, yeah. I would hope that they would develop some type of queue system, though, to, to fix it. Just create a queue where anyone who wants to get into a multiplayer battle join the queue, and then as soon as that four people join it, bam, battle that, starts. That would require online servers for Pokemon. Yeah. Hey, here's like, hoping. They would have to have multiple servers in order for that queue to be, like, decent. It would be so much easier rather than 
you know, and, having to and then even you with have the to, no, even with the queue though, you'll still have issues where uh, then then you would where, have to take into account is that person in another region? Is that person's internet decent? It, yeah. <clears throat> and even if you it, do add a queue system, take uh, it from someone who's been playing Splatoon since launch. A queue system for Pokemon would be a bad idea because of the constant servers that they would have, have to have the constant maintenance, whether if yep. one person is going to be laggy or not. Yeah. And you'll still get that issue of, oh, player number four has, has, did not, has uh, said they didn't want to participate in this duel, and you're re-entered in the queue. At the top of the list, mind you, but you're re-entered in the queue, and you still have to wait for somebody, for a fourth player, or a whole new party to, to sign up. I it's mean, just why the would you want a multi system? Why would why would you want to multi battle with random people anyway? Because your friends you, are not if you, online. If you want to multi battle with somebody, just make sure your friends are online and do it when they're online. Uh, I mean, multi battling with random people is a bad idea. But it's it's fun because you don't know who you're up against. You could be up against, uh, you, or you could have an ally that is an expert, or you, you have an ally that is trying to focus on a specific type of strategy, and you, of course you don't know what they're trying to do because there's no way to communicate, right? So you, you're trying to uh, spur the moment type of thing, you're trying to adapt to whoever you're paired up with. Chaos in Pokemon! Exactly. Nah, it, I, I agree with Roxy, There there's... There probably isn't any a need for a Q system. There, all uh, I'm saying is there there has to be some better way for for them to do it, rather than the the way it was developed in X and Y and Ruby and Sapphire. Because there's not that they, Q would. Be they bad. they have to come up with something though, because it, it's so easy to get into a battle with one opposing trainer, but getting into a battle with three, I mean. Uh, either, either reduce the refresh rate of the list that appears, so that you can actually get those those okay. same players. What's that your wait time your... when you do this? How long do you traditionally wait for for players to join in on your multi battle? Usually a very long time. Like how long? If if you can find, I mean, most of the time, what ends up happening is. You send a request to one person, they accept, you send it to a second, they accept after a minute or two, and then you're waiting for the third person to accept, and then when they don't, or when it times out, then you've lost the first two that accepted at the same time. Well, how long does it take until it times out? That's what she's asking, Scott. And no, it's, it's literally, what I'm, what I'm asking is, like, is how long does it take usually for everyone to get in for you to find players to get into a battle? Sometimes it can take upwards of an hour, depending on whether you, you can get three people to accept or not. And you have to invite these people individually yourself, or does this, does the game do that for you? you like, you randomly invite? You, you send an invite to all three players, all three random people that you find on the touch screen at the same time uh -huh. and and then you're waiting for all three to accept so if if okay. all three are online and they accept the challenge then okay. usually now i see two, now i see where the complaint is yeah if i was gonna say if it, your complaint was just the fact that people decided last minute that they didn't want to play and you had to wait longer i'd be like welcome to the life of an mmo player yeah <laughs> or of a raider or pvp player uh but your complaint is the fact that you have to re-invite everyone, which again is again welcome to the life of an MMO player. But I don't have to invite everyone myself. Yeah, the system does it for me. There is once probably that person declines or it times out, the player list is refreshed, so yeah. you can't invite them again. Which I believe is what the acquaintance section is for. So anyone you've either wonder traded. Senate, etc. E even acquaintance, though, I mean, it's it's difficult. In Here's the sense an easy that way to fix people that. People deny the requests, right? Here's an easy way to fix that. Add a button that says auto invite. It regen. You just hit auto invite, and it random and it randomly invites three people off of your list. 
and then when the, if they didn't if they deny it hit the hit, hit auto invite again and it'll randomly invite three people off of your list you don't it's something that you don't need a server for it's something you can build it's a functionality you can build directly into the game that yeah, I that, could see. yeah. yeah. That, that might help out. <laughs> yeah. But then again, therein lies the question, why would you want a multi-battle with random people? This Some people bad. like it. Because of the experience, Roxy. It, it's all about the experience. You don't always want to do it with a bunch of friends. You could ask the same thing of somebody who plays Call of Duty. Why would you want to join a lobby with six... with? 15 other people that you have no idea of that you know for a fact are going to harass you. People do it. I don't because understand. You can't, because you can't harass people on Pokemon. Yeah, true. But still, Meanwhile, it's like... I've gotten death threats from people on Reverse because of Splatoon. But that's, a, but that's a point bonus in favor of why you'd want to do that in Pokemon, because you can't get harassed for it. It's a safe place to do that. So, <laughs> some people get the kick out of beating up random people online. <laughs> hey. I think we found what kind of person Scott is. And yes. I'm, I'm that kind of person too. I, I, I indulge in the PvP uh, with uh, with people in Final Fantasy all the time. and I suck at it, but hey, I understand the, I understand where Scott's getting at as to why he wants to do that. So, Well, that, that covers all the points I want to get across. I mean, I know we could nitpick on, on all of the... Uh, different things we saw in the trailer, um, like the island and and all that stuff, the locations. 7.8 out of 10, too much water. <laughs> Ugh. Was this there anything a little uh, bit off. you want to bring up, either of you two, on, on this new title? Anything you'd like to see that maybe wasn't revealed yet, or...? Um... I Not want to really. Know it's, what it's kind a Pokemon of game. The starters and Iwanko holds because apparently those four Pokemon hold some kind of secret. It, it, it's a Pokemon game. It follows the traditional formula, so I'm not really expecting anything, any big reveals See, or any or wanting anything out of it. Is it's following I'm, the formula? I'm really hopeful for Sun and Moon because of the Colosseum and Veil of Darkness vibe that it gives. The and vibe? they said that they're tr they said that they're trying to do something with Sun and Moon that they haven't done in recent games or in a, it was either recent games or Pokemon games at all, and that kind of makes me hopeful. Okay. For something like challenging and something more fun, it's X and Y wasn't. It? Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire wasn't. It? Really. Yeah, they they weren't that fun. X and Y was like the easiest Pokemon game to do, and Omega yeah. Ruby and Alpha Sapphire had no difficulty. So the hardest games were Colosseum and Gale of Darkness. And I'll admit I'm a little out of touch. Last Pokemon game I played was Pokemon Diamond version, and that was several sad. years ago. So I missed the best gen. What gen? Which was which gen, gen was that? Black and white and black to and white to my favorite. Or generation five is my favorite gen, but yeah. Colosseum and Gale of Darkness are my favorite Pokemon games. I, I okay. have to side with Sarah on this because Gen four was it, it was all about Gen four I'm not, for me. I didn't say I didn't say I took sides. I just said that was the last Pokemon game I played. I didn't say it was the best generation. That was just the last generation I happened to play. I, I love Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, and, and uh, I, I just it's never really got into Gen 5. I don't now, know why I stopped playing Pokemon after Diamond. Now, if we get a remake of Diamond and Pearl, maybe they can make it better. <laughs> ah! Here comes all the hate, hate comments still, towards Roxy I'm, on Gen 4. You can't tell, you cannot call me a hater when I went out and rebought Pearl just to play it, and that was three weeks ago, and I still haven't gotten a Rourke because I'm not having fun. Uh. You cannot call me a hater because I'm not having fun, and I knew the game wasn't going to be that good when I tried re replaying. 
See, which that's does, how which... I felt about Gen 5, though. When I played Gen 5, it literally took me three times as long to get through the story because, I, it, in a sense, I wasn't having as much fun with Gen 5. Question, I mean, what qualifies what... as beating a Pokemon game? Getting to the Legendary or beating the uh, Ultimate Four people? Defeating the what Elite Four champion. What a Pokemon game is defined by is starting out as a new trainer in a region and then you somehow getting caught up in the deeds of the antagonist team which yeah. out of the current six generations that are out has happened with some kind of legendary three out of those six generations. It didn't happen in the first year. Okay. But you still got ca ca caught up in their schemes. And then... Right, so end game and then, then is... And then you have to defeat the gym leaders and then the elite team. That's what defines a Pokemon game. And it's been that way in every So the, defeating game. the elite four then is the uh, ultimate end game of the series, of the, of the game then. Yeah. Right? Unless you're playing gold and silver and crystal or heart gold and gold, soul, silver, then defeating red is the ultimate end goal. Ah. Uh, okay, I haven't beaten Pokemon Diamond then, because I couldn't get past the uh, fourth uh, Elite Four member. But, sorry, that was the only reason why I asked that, because I wasn't sure if I defeated Diamond or not. I did get the legendary Pokemon, I just didn't defeat the Elite Four. If you didn't see the credits roll, then that's not the end of the game. True enough. That is so true. Well, aside from that, though, I, I am pretty excited for Sun and Moon, and uh, all of you guys can see that because uh, in our upfront presentation about a week or two ago, we announced that uh, we'll be doing a Sun Moon series, which I'm very excited about. Um, yeah. more, more details to come because I don't want to spoil it for anyone yet, but... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm debating picking up Sun or Moon, I will admit. I've already got Moon pre-ordered. Because, <laughs> you know, Lunala's got the type advantage over Sun! Or Sylvalia, <laughs> I should say. Really? Yeah, because of the steel nerf in Gen 6, making it weak to dark and ghost type, or making dark types and normal or and ghost types normally effective on it, Lunala being a psychic and ghost, now has the type advantage over Solgaleo. That, that, really? is, that is an interesting point, though, because how would you feel if they made modifications to the type chart again? Oh, they probably will. Because it, 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 it is a new generation, and we, we are assuming that the type chart from Gen 6 is carrying over, but what if they do make some modifications to the existing types? Depends on what they make a modification for. Be something uh, something else interesting to keep tabs on when we get new information. I'm from this point on, like after E3, I'm gonna blot myself out for any sun and moon news. That way, I can be completely in the dark, other than from what I already know. When I pick up Moon in November, I so can you understand can be that. Ex surprised and uh, get to experience it what, from the ground up. Which is fun fact: what I did with Black and White, and then I had the most fun in a Pokemon game, except for in Coliseum and Game of Darkness, with those games. Okay, fair enough. All right, so I think we've covered uh, Sun and Moon. Uh, yeah, I, I think we got all the points nailed down, and, and again, I mean, uh, a lot of people can go over the minor details, like the locations and everything, but uh, generally, uh, I, I, I should, s I, I, I don't want to assume anything more at this point. I mean, like, like you said, Roxy, I, I do want to be somewhat surprised um, by what's uh, included in this next generation. So, let's get into our third, um, I guess, 
I don't want to say it's a big title, but it's, uh... The only other title. I guess you could mm. say one of the only other titles, aside from maybe Tokyo Mirage and... Well, I mean, aside from this month, right? Because this month you've got Tokyo Mirage, the Olympic... Uh, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, and... Um, Oh, that's right, we that? had the Olympics this year, don't we? I can't talk about Tokyo Mirage Session Sharp Fire Emblem because I haven't uh, seen anything from it. Yeah, we're, we're not going to go... I'm not really life. interested in it. Yeah, we're, we're not going to go Color into a, a ton of details on it, but you hit the nail on the head, Sarah! Because we uh, we have to at least address the color splash trailer. It looks fun. I was watching the gameplay, and it, for the overworld, it, and for the battle, it looks fun. I, I didn't there, see it. There, there's disclosure. gonna be a war going on here, Roxy. I'm, I'm just gonna tell care. you that right now. I'll I, get I, my popcorn ready. Uh, I'll get a gun and shoot you <laughs> in the kneecaps. I, I agree with you, it looks fun, but to the point uh, that I was talking with Sarah uh, uh, earlier tonight, um, all the people on the internet who were initially angry at the first 60 second clip we got back in March, and, and you had all these other people saying, well, don't judge the trailer, you, you've only seen a minute's worth of gameplay footage, I mean, it could be completely different. Uh, to, to be fair, I kind of understand the, the hatred towards Color Splash, because after watching the half-hour trailer earlier today, it does look fun, but it doesn't look like a Paper Mario game. No, what it doesn't look like is Thousand Year Door. It, it doesn't... That's what it doesn't look like, and that's where people are getting mad. Because they believe that the last real Paper Mario game was Thousand Year Door. Which Super Paper Mario proved you don't have to follow conven conventional Paper Mario game for, uh, play to be a Paper Mario game. Regardless of whether you think Thousand Year Door or Super Paper Mario was the last true Paper Mario game, I'm seeing a lot of similarities to Sticker Star in, in that half-hour trailer from you know, the thing cards being used in the environments again to open up puzzles, you have like the cat uh, thing card, and then you have the fan, and you have the battery. Um, what was that gobbledy gobble from someone's don't mic? Don't <laughs> Uh, well, like I said, it, it probably is a fun game. It's just, I feel like they didn't need to associate it with the Paper Mario franchise. They could have created a brand new IP that revolved around this card-based battle mechanic and just gone with that series instead. I mean, I like the way that the cards are used in the overworld for Color Splash. Because I was watching one section of the Color Splash stuff, and they were in this, like, fire area, and it was before they fought Morton. Yeah. And they had to use a card in order to get to a door because the bridge was collapsed. And yeah. I thought that was really cool. I thought it was a really neat way to use the card. It, it, it is unique. Um... But then the question becomes, is it going to be the same as Sticker Star, where no one tells you which specific card to use? I mean, is it just going to be a matter... Well, I mean, fortunately, this time you don't lose the card, the, uh, the thing card, when you actually use it uh, to, to open up or, or to complete the puzzle, so at least they improved on that. Um, but it does make you wonder, I mean, is there going to be some kind of, uh, of hint in the game this time to, to say, okay, well, you need to get to this particular location, you need this particular card, rather than you just cycling through your entire inventory and then finding out nothing works, and then you're basically on your own to try to find uh, another thing, item, that, that'll work. 
Mm, I, mm, there's no telling. Because that was one of the biggest gripes with Sticker Star. I mean, uh, after seeing more of the battle system, I mean, it's... It, it's something I'll have to get used to. I, again, I mean, it, it looks fun. It's not the Paper Mario I wanted. It's not the one a lot of people because wanted. Because it's not Thousand New Door. Yeah, in, in the RPG-esque sense. Um, the other thing that I hope is that there are a lot more unique enemies. Because, I mean, yeah, the first time Morden is in the uh, the Paper Mario franchise, but I, I want them to go outside of the box with Thousand Year Door and Super Paper Mario again. Create unique enemies. Don't just take enemies that have already existed in Mario games to this point, which is exactly what they did with Sticker Star, and to an extent, Mario & Luigi Paper Jam. E even Mario & Luigi Dream Team had a unique enemy that had never been seen before. So... Mario and Luigi is also not Paper Mario, and you can't compare the two. <clears throat> no, two but, but I, I, I am using it as an example, where I, I per personally prefer when they come up with these really unique, one-of-a-kind enemies, these dastardly villains that have, like, this fantastic backstory behind Changing them. Changing the formula a bit. Yeah, not, not just going with another, uh... Bowser! Yeah, another standard Bowser um, villain, which may be the case. I mean, hey, because, the Koopalings I mean, are now the Koopalings are now going to be in a Paper Mario game. That's something that hasn't been done yet. It's unique to that Paper Mario game. It's not an enemy that hasn't been in previous entries in the game. No, but it's enemies that we've seen before. I mean, in you're like, you like yeah. That's because it's yeah. the same heroes as before. You can't, you can't fully expect every all the bad guys to be new. All the bad guys to be new. Because I mean, you, it's the same world. You, you think of, you think of enemies like Count Black and enemies like the X Nots, right? I mean, they literally came up with these guys from scratch, right? They never existed before. They most likely will never exist again because they're they're creatively different. They're they're unique in their own right, rather than just recycling the the same bad guys we've seen. We've seen Morton before. We've seen Iggy. We've seen all the Koopalings, Bowser Jr. So I, I was hoping for something different in in Color Splash that they they would think outside of the box. Like what we saw in Thousand Year Door Look, and Super Let me Paper ask this. Mario. In Sticker Star, was it possible to use people like Shy Guys as allies? No. And and that I will say is is unique. I I, I think I will like that feature in Color Splash. Because, you know, that's unique and hasn't been used in a Paper Mario game before. I still wish it was um well, in, in, well, not not just Thousand Year Door, but I wish there was like an actual sidekick to Mario that had their own HP gauge. Because I mean, I I can see Mario getting pummeled again. I mean, well, granted, because in the trailer when he was fighting Morton, right? I mean, he used that uh, fire extinguisher which basically wrecked Morden, even though when Mario got hit with the fire hammer, Mario took like 48 points of damage, even though Mario, Mario only almost had, like, got wrecked. Yeah, 50, 50 HP and almost one shot. But hey, if the game's not gonna challenge me, I'm not gonna find it any fun. If I can almost get one shot from an enemy's attack, then I'm gonna have, I'm gonna be pressed. I'm gonna be like, oh snap, what do I do? Do I, should I heal? Should I use this? Did, that's, uh, that's fine. It's, did, it's, did they show it's, anything in the trailer about selectively targeting specific enemies, or was it like Sticker Star where you had to target the first enemy in the line of enemies, or I'm not all? sure. I'm not sure, because when he was fighting Morton, he had the two Shy Guys and then the Pedestal. 
And what he did was he organized his cards and the way he attacked in such a way that he wouldn't jump on to Morton, but instead nailed the two shy guys and then was able to get rid of the stand that Morton was standing on. Yeah, I, uh, I, I liked how he was thinking on that one. Three hammer it attacks. Means you and... have to strategize your cards, which is something I had talked about, which is cool and fun. I, like I said, I think it will be fun. It's just it's not what you wanted in a Paper Mario game. No, and and we knew we knew from the point where they revealed that initial one minute trailer that because the game was already in localization, Intelligent Systems was not going to completely change the formula. The game had already been completed at that point. They were just translating the dialogue and everything. I, I guess we were all just hoping it was going to be similar to the original entries in the franchise. And, and what again... What was the date that they said for stick, uh, okay. Color Splash? Sorry, what? What was the date that they announced for Color Splash? Friday, October 7th. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. So, uh, again, I'll buy the game because it is a Paper Mario game, and I have to try it, and I, I do like the series, um, but this trailer didn't really, it, it didn't really jump out at me and, and uh, negate some of the uh, negativity that we all saw. Here's, here's the thing, a lot, as you said, a lot of people have negativity because it doesn't feel like a Paper Mario game. And it feels like it's too much like a previous game that they didn't like. Uh, and the reason why they didn't like that game was because it too didn't feel like a Paper Mario game. And they, they changed up the formula. But back to Legend of Zelda, they're changing up the formula. I'm pretty certain that when I get into that game, it's not going to feel exactly like a Zelda game. Because it's open world, it's, you, it's sandboxy but it still has that Zelda flavor to it. But no one's going to be get pissed off about that. I but guess it's it's more of the difference in genre. Because you know, on the one hand, and, and not to argue in favor or against this, but you could say that the new Legend of Zelda game is, is very similar to the previous ones in that it, it's still... Um, it's well, still an action-adventure title. Yeah, it's, it's still action-adventure, it's still Link, you're still, you know, using your sword and shield and bombs and everything. I mean, the, the majority of Mario, it is the same. Mario is still jumping and using his hammer on enemies. Yeah, but we're, we're talking about a completely different battle system, Roxy. Well, I mean, that, yeah, that's, that's where the Mario hatred is coming from. Hammer in Thousand Year Door and every other Paper Mario game, except for maybe Sticker Star, because I haven't played that, Mario either would jump on something or use his hammer to affect the environment around it. He's doing that in Color Splash. Just like you said, Link is still using his sword and shield. Nothing about that has changed. Yeah, but the yeah. difference here is in the actual battle mechanics. We're talking about going from a JRPG similar to the early Final Fantasy games and Bravely Default and whatnot. Menu-based turn. Yeah. Menu turn-based combat, yeah. And and it's going from a JRPG to an action-adventure RPG, which is less of a focus on the, uh, I guess, the, the traditional role-playing yeah. style. And like Final Pokemon. Fantasy went through that same transition. Final Fantasy went through that same transition. Final Fantasy 14, Final Fantasy 14, 15, that's coming out. Final Fantasy 13, I believe, and a, few, pro, and a bunch of others weren't turn-based menu JRPG style turn-based nonsense. Uh, but they were still loved games, and there, yeah, people were angry. When, whenever you do that, regardless of what type of game it is, you're always going to create a divide in the fan base. Yeah, exactly. You're you're always going to get some people who, in, in Final Fantasy sense, who hated the original turn-based combat system, and now that it's more action-oriented, it, it's more their style. So they're yeah. going to gain new, uh, new yeah. 
uh, new players in that sense. But because but... it still feels like a Final Fantasy game, they, 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 the older players eventually warm up to it. And I guarantee you, with the with the Legend of Zelda, with this with this new sort of uh, slightly more modern take on the the series, people are still going to. There are people who are going to be upset about the new Legend of Zelda not feeling exactly like the Legend of Zelda. Like I heard Roxy say. Uh, before we started recording, or at least someone say that people were upset that it didn't was didn't feel like Ocarina of Time or Twilight Princess. It was too open world, and you're never going to please all the fans. Ultimately, what what matters is the game fun. Yes, it could completely change its genre. It could put, go. It could completely be something different from what you're used to. But if the game is fun and it carries the name that you love, that's ultimately what matters. The the one thing that I hope for, and I've said it before in, in both of our previous reviews of Color Splash, is that if Color Splash doesn't sell well, and I have a feeling it won't, m maybe it'll do fine in Japan, but I don't think it's going to get the sales numbers over here in North America that Nintendo is hoping for. Um, but if it doesn't sell well, I hope Intelligent Systems doesn't look at that and think it's not selling well because people don't like the Paper Mario franchise. I hope what they take away from this is if it doesn't sell well, it's because we didn't retain the original formula. And next time, which will be in another four or five years, 2022 on the NX or whatever new console is out, uh, hopefully by then, someone at Intelligent Systems who is in charge of the dev team will look at this and say, okay, let's at least try going back to the original formula because we have to give it a shot after two decades of not retaining the formula, we have to give it a shot once more, because maybe people will like it. There's only two ways that anyone in intelligence systems will realize this. The first way is if somebody on the development team browses every internet forum ever dealing with the Paper Mario series. The second way is if Nintendo wises up and put some goddamn GameCube games on the eShop and put Thousand Year Door on the eShop. That's the only way they're gonna figure it out. You, the, this, the weirdest part is that you would think alone from the, uh, the N64 version of Paper Mario, which was up on the Wii eShop and then re-released on the Wii U eShop, you would think from the ratings alone and the number of people who have bought that game alone that it, it would have some influence on Color Splash, but maybe you're right. Maybe when they release the NX, if Nintendo is going to take the all-digital route eventually and, and get those GameCube games on the eShop like we all want them to, um, when they release Thousand Year Door on the eShop and they see how many people download it, and, and even though the game will be, what, 15 years possibly? E even older than that by the time it actually shows up on the eShop, when they see how much of a following and how many people are still willing to pay money for a game from 2004, I mean, maybe then something will click and, and they'll realize, okay, these two were successful because of the formula. Yeah. But anyways, like I said, I'm still gonna get the game because it's Paper Mario. I have to try it, and like you said, it does look fun. Disappointed, but it does look fun. Uh, I am going to give Paper Mario Color Splash, I'm gonna revise my score, and I'm going to bring it down a point, and give it a 4 out of 10 now. <laughs> Roxy, what are you uh, gonna do? Are you gonna keep it at uh... what? What did I say my score was last time? I believe you said was it six point five? 
I think it was. I'll probably keep it at 6.5. It may be a 7 now because it does look pretty fun to me. What about you, Sarah? Uh, if I remember my score, I scored the trailer a 2 out of 10 because I'm <laughs> sorry. It was a really stupid launch trailer. Are, are you wasn't... going to uh, stick with that score? Uh, my score for this one is uh, NA, not applicable. I didn't watch it, so. <laughs> as long as the game's fun and people enjoy it, that's all that really matters. And I don't have any information to, so yeah, not applicable. But right. I do would, would like to address my comment for the whole RYB thing. Yes, I understand paint theory is RYB, but vision operates off of G RGB and TVs operate off of RGB. That's why it bugs me. So, ha. Huh. All right, and I'm sure all of our viewers have uh, tons of comments on uh, <laughs> Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon and Paper Mario Color Splash. So make sure to let us know your thoughts on all of these games, uh, because we love to hear from you. Uh, we're going to finish up with a brief, I guess, synopsis or overview of the other games that were announced, most of which none of us here really care about, but I have to mention them anyway because Nintendo talked about them. So... We're, we're just going to spend uh, a couple of quick minutes here uh, talking about what was discussed. Quick overview, so some of the games include Mario Party Star Rush. Uh, I did see that, and that looked kind of dumb. Ever Oasis? Nope. nope. Monster Hunter Generations. Oh my god! <laughs> Yokai Watch 2, which comes in two versions Fleshy Souls and Bony Spirits. Um. Yay, Pokemon Rip Off! <laughs> uh, Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix. Never been into Rhythm Heaven, so I don't care. Dragon Quest 7, Fragments of the Never Forgotten Past. Never been into Dragon Quest, don't care. Uh, we did see some additional footage of Tokyo Mirage, which I know you're not a big fan of, Roxy. It's uh, not that I'm not a big fan of it, it's just I'm just not interested in it. I, I'll say the girl with the blue hair is really cute and attractive. Okay. Scott, you're attracted to anyone. Please. No! I mean, to, Dawn! Hey! I just... Uh... Well... <laughs> I shouldn't say. <laughs> if every girl had long blue hair in this world, my chances of getting a, a girlfriend would just shoot up like 500%. Right. Other games that were talked about Box Box Boy. What the f is that? Severed. What the f is that? Axiom no Verge. I think I saw that and that looked cool because I. I think it was on Steam, and I wanted it, but I didn't have enough money for it. Uh, what was the other one? Jotun Valhalla Edition? For Wii U? Uh, Runbo Pocket. Oh, yeah, I heard, I saw that. I didn't see anything about it. I just saw the, I, I just saw it on the, uh, E3 feed. Runbo Pocket. And, and uh, me. last but not least... Uh, we got some additional discussion on uh, Pokemon Go. I'm excited for Go. I'm kind of interested to see how, how they implement that, to be honest. I wouldn't I'm... mind uh, picking it up. If I get told I have to go to Canada to go catch a Pokemon. One of us. You might One have to. Be... <laughs> or you, at the very least, you might have to trade. Um, I'm not I don't that see them man. doing that. So, I'm, hey man, one of y'all better be able to accommodate me while I'm in Canada searching for a goddamn YouTube. Well, <laughs> it, it won't be me because, and this is why I'm not too excited about it, I do not have a smartphone. And yes, I know all of you are standing out there laughing at me because we're in 2016 and I don't have a smartphone. But no, I don't, and I'm not interested in getting one, so... Get a smartphone, Scott. No! <laughs> Jeez! Get a smartphone, that way you can play Go! The most exciting part that I see of Pokemon Go is the possibility of a future <laughs> VR title. 
where it's sort of like uh, PlayStation VR or the HTC Vive. Like, if, if Nintendo ever came out with a home console where you could wear a VR headset and be in, in a virtual MMO or whatever type of massive online game, then yeah, I would definitely get into it, but... Yeah, Pokemon Go, I mean, for people who don't have a smartphone or who aren't interested in getting a smartphone, like yours truly, uh, doesn't really <laughs> appeal to me. Well, that's your fault, man. <laughs> I'll stick to not your, hard to go uh, to the local like 3DS. Not titles. hard to go to the local Dollar General. How do you not ha ha pick up a phone and be like, "Hey, I'm just I'm curious gonna buy to this how you don't have Android one. cell phone." Because I'm just curious. I, I I don't really have a need for it. But I no, mean, what I mean, like, what I mean is, going out to buy a phone nowadays is literally just smartphones. How do you not have one unless you have a phone? I I We're never to... I never wanted to get one, and and I yeah. we're talking to the guy that still uses Internet Explorer in 2016. Hey, there is nothing wrong but, with no, 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 Internet no, no, Explorer. No, no. I'm, I'm not saying it's a question of whether you want one or not. What I'm saying is like, when you go out to buy a phone contractor to get a new phone, that's literally your only option. I I don't and, get new phones though. That that's the so thing. I'm I'm not into the whole mobile phone era yet anyways i when when i go out the only thing i take with me is my 3ds i don't have a cell Scott, phone or a smartphone or anything like that out of curiosity are you like 50 years old no <laughs> when, did yeah, when did you get your phone yeah when did you get your phone what phone the current you don't have a phone at all all i have is a traditional landline phone the one that uh, you keep at home. That's why. I, you don't I have don't... a cell phone at all. Okay. No, I, I was I've confused. never had a cell phone. And, and I'm just not interested in, in it. That's why I was confused. I thought you had a cell phone. I was like, how did you go out and get a cell phone and avoid getting a smartphone? Oh. Uh, right. yeah. I mean, I never got a smartphone until I was in my senior year. I'm, look, like, I'm, I'm not saying you're bad. But I'm, I never I'm not saying that I'm against smartphones and that I'll never yeah. get one. It's just right now I don't see a need no, yeah. for me to to get one. Even if it's specifically for Pokemon Go, I mean honestly, when I look at the footage of Pokemon Go, and and the way you catch Pokemon and the fact that you're walking out around the neighborhood and all of that, I just think it would be a heck of a lot easier to catch Pokemon on my 3DS in a traditional sense. I mean, yeah. I've, I've, I've already got all 720 of the 721 that exist in my Pokemon bank. And and when the new ones come out in Sun and Moon, I, I can catch them a heck of a lot faster going through Sun and Moon and trading between the two than by catching them through Pokemon Go and then trading them over when they eventually include trade. Oh, fair enough. But anyways, that pretty much takes just, care of... <laughs> just just a heads up, Scott. Pokemon Go is going to have connections with Sun and Moon. I know. What? But in, in the sense of catching and trading, I would rather do it on <laughs> Sun and Moon. It, it's so much easier. I mean, it's a Pokemon game where we get to see Pokemon on our phone in Walmart. If if you That's have something kids have always wanted, and now we're getting it. If if you have a smartphone and you're constantly using it every single day, then yeah, I mean I I can't argue with it. I mean people would love that. It's just for someone like me who doesn't have one, it, it's not that appealing. I mean if, yeah, if I understand. Let let me put it to you this way: if at some point Nintendo decided to only create main series titles of Pokemon on smartphones, then yes, I would have to get a smartphone. But as long as Nintendo has some kind of dedicated device, which they manufacture themselves, whether it's handheld or home console, I, I would personally just stick to the dedicated device and get a smartphone. Is it because yeah. Nintendo and Game Freak aren't making this? Uh, is that it? Is that the real reason? No. No, it's because he doesn't need a cell phone. No, I was, I was, I wasn't being... 
<laughs> but, but besides, I mean, I, I appreciate what uh, Masuda-san has done with in, the, the interactivity and, and the fact that he's going to be connecting it with Sun and Moon like you, you mentioned. I mean, I appreciate all the hard work he's done, and, and like I said, I, I have nothing bad to say about the mobile title, it's just, it, it's not something I'm interested in. Uh, but anyways, that covers all of the games uh, Nintendo has announced uh, and discussed at length, including Zelda <laughs> at uh, this year's E3. Yeah. Uh, was there anything either of you two wanted to add uh, before we wrap this up? The chic shirts that they were wearing during the Zelda stuff. Someone tell me where I can buy that, please. I agree. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe yes, someone please. will put it up on eBay or something. They already have. Oh, oh God. Really? They, it and the coin that you get for finishing uh, or for playing the demo on, at E3 already on eBay for like 200 something bucks. Ouch. Somebody buy it for us and send it to us. <laughs> that's, uh... <laughs> that's what you get for not uh, being, uh... headquartered in LA, I guess. You miss yeah. out on some of these I mean, things. I was hoping I was gonna win that Nintendo thing, but... Because if I had won this Nintendo thing, we wouldn't be having this discussion right now. It would have had to have been put off. Because I would enough. be in LA. <laughs> that, that is true. All right, well, that, uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. That's all the time we have for you guys tonight. Uh, I know it was long, uh, probably the longest game view discussion we will ever have at over two yeah. hours. Yeah. Um, but we appreciate you guys sticking around and listening to everything that we've got to say. Uh, if you want to comment on any of the stuff we talked about tonight and let us know your thoughts, make sure to hit us up on Facebook, on Twitter, follow us on all social media, at Toondyche, hashtag GameView, and support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Toondice. For everyone here at GameView, I'm Scott. I'm Roxy. I'm Sarah. And thanks for watching. Have a great weekend, guys.